This is a true story of a thief so brilliant, he managed to steal $1.4 billion with the use of only a screwdriver, an old TV antenna, and a ton of courage. He was so good at what he did that the police thought it was the work of an organized gang of professionals that operate across Europe. But their jaws dropped when they finally uncovered the man behind the incredible heist. How did he do it? And what simple mistake did he make for the authorities to put an end to his crimes? This is his unbelievable story. MGV Facts. Yeah. Apart from luxurious cars and palatial houses, masterpieces created by famous artists in history can also be considered a status symbol. Aside from its historical value, paintings or artworks are one of a kind. That's why it can be worth millions of dollars. And because of this, not only aristocrats have an interest in it, but also organized crime syndicates and the black market. According to Interpol's report, there is an estimated $4 billion to $6 billion worth of famous paintings and artworks that have been stolen around the world. Most of the stolen items are taken to the countries of Iraq, Afghanistan, Syria, and Libya to be smuggled and sold to syndicates interested in them. According to the same report, the most targeted country when it comes to art theft is France, where museums and art galleries are everywhere. And in the world of art theft, there is no one more notorious than Stéphane Breitweiser, because among hundreds of artworks that disappeared from the world, he was the one who did it. But even before he even made a name as the world's most consistent art thief, Stéphane Breitweiser was just like many of us. He too was poor in life. Although he lives in France, Luck and Stéphane's life in the 1980s were elusive. Even so, he tried to make ends meet by being a waiter in a restaurant. And it was during his job that he met his partner in crime, Anne Catherine Kleinklaus, a nurse. Although he was young and had a decent job, Stéphane still lives in his parents' house, particularly in the basement where he had a small space to call a bedroom. But even though he lacked the money, he and his girlfriend loved to travel and see new places especially around France and neighboring countries. And the travel goals of the two led them to the biggest opportunity of their lives. In March 1995, the two went to a museum that used to be a medieval castle in Gruyères, Switzerland. The two were interested in seeing this castle as well as the collection of medieval art displayed in the area. Medieval art is any artwork from the medieval period from 476 AD to the year 1450. One of the unique characteristics of medieval art is that it tells biblical stories through paintings, sculptures, and so on. And for Stéphane, the artworks that come from those times are fascinating. While walking around and looking around the corridors of the said art museum, an artwork seemed to capture Stéphane's attention. And that is a portrait by Christian Wilhelm Dietrich, a German painter. When he came closer to look closely and appreciate such art, he felt a strange feeling. In fact, there is a name for this phenomenon, and it is called kakuithis. For most of us, kakuithis only last a few seconds and will go away quickly. But for Stéphane, it seems that it lingered in his mind for a long time, and he suddenly had the urge to do something you wouldn't expect for someone with a clean criminal record, and is to steal the painting valued to be in the millions of dollars. And what's even more surprising is when he asked his girlfriend if she wanted to go on with his plan, and Catherine agreed with no hesitation. But unlike in action heists films we watched like Ocean's Eleven or Mission Impossible, there are no high-tech gadgets involved in this robbery. In fact, the duo didn't even have planning, schematics of the building, or even a waiting getaway vehicle. Stéphane just removed the said painting from the canvas, rolled it up and stuffed it in his bag and just left the main exit of the said museum calmly. And that successful and simple heist indeed woke up the sleeping notorious thief in the person of Stéphane. In fact, within six years after that particular day, he successfully completed 239 art robberies in 172 different art galleries in seven different countries. And the total amount of what he stole was estimated to be at $1.4 billion. To compare just how much is the value Stéphane's stolen artworks, we need to put together three of the most expensive artworks ever auctioned. First is Leonardo da Vinci's Salvatore Mundi, worth $450 million. Second, William de Kooning's Interchange, which reached $300 million. And the third is Paul Cézanne's card players, worth $250 million. 
Together, the total value would only be $1 billion, and another $400 million is needed to equal Stéphane's collection of stolen artworks. But how did he do these without attracting the attention of the authorities at first? According to Stefan himself, he deliberately did not choose the big art galleries because he knew it would have the latest security features and highly trained security personnel. Unlike the small art galleries that, according to Stefan, there is a big hole when it comes to security. First, the security there is very relaxed because small art galleries run on the trust of patrons and respect for culture and the very value of art. Second, most people would think that artworks or paintings in small art galleries having detectors, but according to his experience, most of them don't have, and stealing a paintings there is like changing a picture frame in the living room of your house. With great ease, he is able to carry out his robberies in broad daylight. There are some artworks that are easy to remove from the frame and just place in a container. Most display cases are said to be easy to remove with a screwdriver. He only needs 15 to 20 minutes to add something new to his collection. Aside from a screwdriver, one of Stefan's best favorite tools in his heists is his old telescopic radio antenna to change the angle and direction of the CCTVs in the area that can monitor his movements. It's hard to believe when you think about it. But in fact, he was able to steal from the same museum several times to steal artworks using this old and outdated technique. Now you might think that police across Europe are dumb for not catching Stefan up to this stage. You might also think that maybe his heists were part of an inside job, that's why he was able to get away with it so easily. The fact is, there are hundreds of art heists that happen all over Europe every day. That's why it is almost impossible for the authorities to track the thieves. Even though they assigned undercover agents in the black market to conduct surveillances, they never had any clue on Stefan's crimes. According to the police, this is probably the works of a powerful international art heist cartel who, unbeknownst to them, is just a humble French waiter living in his mother's basement. But why is this Stefan still in the basement? If he has $1.4 billion, why doesn't he just live on a remote private island and retire from his thievery? The answer? Because he did not sell such artworks. In fact, all of them are on display or just hidden in the basement where he sleeps. After Stefan and his girlfriend would steal these artworks, the two would head straight to the basement to add to their private collection, a private collection that, if sold, would easily make them among the richest people in the world. But not everything was smooth sailing for Stefan and his girlfriend. In fact, in 1997, Stefan was first accused of stealing an artwork by William Van Aylst from a gallery of a private collector who had given permission to a few people to see such collections. When the owner was alerted of the theft, he saw the couple carrying the artwork in the back seat of their car. Stefan was later caught, and since this was only his first offense on Swiss soil, he was only awarded an eight-month suspended sentence and was banned from Switzerland until May 2000. But as the story goes, this did not stop Stefan and continued his passion, stealing artwork throughout Europe, until it came to a point where his lack of control and greed brought him to his downfall. Stefan was not any more satisfied with the billions worth of artworks he had. He started to gain interest in collecting other things, and this time, his attention was caught by a super-rare bugle or trumpet in a Swiss museum. Just a year after his ban was lifted, Stefan went back to Switzerland in November 2001. His target, the Richard Wagner Museum in Lucerne, to steal a bugle worth $53,000. Such a bugle is one of only three models made worldwide. Unsurprisingly, he succeeded to get the bugle using his normal tactics. But perhaps driven by greed, he wanted to get the other bugle also in the same museum. But unbeknownst to him, when it was reported that one of the bugles in the museum was missing, the staff of the said museum reviewed all security cameras, and it was found out that Stefan was the one who got it. But even before they could launch a search or entrapment operation, Stefan came back to the museum like an insect attracted to the light so he was arrested. After his arrest, the Swiss justice system was no longer as kind to him as before. After 19 days, the international police issued a search warrant to search his mother's house in France to gather evidence that would further prove the crime that Stéphane has been doing for six years. But after searching every corner of his mother's house, they found no evidence. This is where his partner in crime and his mother come in as accomplices. After knowing that Stefan was arrested, Anne Catherine quickly returned home to France and warned her mother about what had happened, so the two immediately moved to get rid of the evidence. 
The sad thing is, they disposed the valuable items too violently. They cut, destroyed, burned, and the other artworks were thrown into the Rhone Rhine Canal. It was then recovered by the police after someone reported to the authorities about the floating artworks in the said canal. Since Stéphane was not aware of what was happening in France, when the authorities showed him whether the artworks in the photograph were included in his collection, the young man did not deny anything. He admitted his crimes, and everyone was shocked by his confession. Because they didn't think that only one person was behind the largest art heist in history. They can't believe that the nearly $1.4 billion worth that has been stolen in different parts of Europe was only done by a person with no high-tech equipment no professional training, armed only with courage, an antenna, and a screwdriver. But even though Stefan stole billions, he was only sentenced to three years in prison, and was released immediately after only two years. His mother, who was involved in disposing of the art, was only imprisoned for 18 months. As for Anne, Catherine, although she denied any involvement in Stefan's crimes, she had to serve six months for the crime of receiving stolen goods and helping keep them. But after serving three years in jail, Stéphane still hasn't learned his lesson. Because in 2011, after his release, he started stealing art goods and was imprisoned for another three years until 2013. And in 2019, the same Stéphane was arrested again for selling a stolen item from a museum and sold it on the e-commerce site eBay. The police also found $177,000 hidden in his mother's home after further search and investigation. He remains incarcerated until today.